six, seven, eight. We have eight. We are recording, Chair. Okay. Do we start in uh, about one minute? Go ahead. Welcome, Henry. Welcome, Rick. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Uh, the meeting of the Small Business Advisory Commission has been called to order on February. No, it's not. It's March 1st, um, 2022. And the start time is 10.32 a.m. Uh, Natalie, will you please uh, call roll? Okay, so... Jane Gonzalez. Jane, I see you there. Uh, present. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Vicki Willoughby. Present. Katie Syracos. Present. Jeremy Roberts. Present. Jalisa Cariello? Present. Henry Woods? <clears throat> I see Henry on there. I don't know if his audio is working yet. It seems like it's a, is not yeah. able to connect to audio. Okay. Be off. Um, Juanita Sepulveda? Present. Rick Tempu? Present. Sarah Shaku. Present. Jim Hollerbach. Present. Okay, we have quorum chair. Fantastic, thank you. Um, let me go ahead and make a short statement before we get started. Uh, before we open the floor to the public, uh, for uh, I believe we have one guest um, to go. But so today, we we're going to try to do is we're going to keep it our time. Um, what we did is we offered this special time or a special meeting to be able to follow up with what we had uh, this, uh, let's see, earlier in February. And so what we want to do is have this other meeting to be able to follow up with those uh, agenda items. So we have a very specific set of things that we're going to be doing today and we'll be going over that. Uh, what we want to do is keep it to an hour and a half strictly. And then from that, we just remember we do have our scheduled meeting, which is next week, March 8th. So we'll be doing that. Um, one of the things I'm going to ask our vice chair to do is to help us keep time on people. What we don't want to do is just have it weighted towards one or two or three people talking the whole time. We do have more members that are coming on, so everybody will have an equal amount. So what we do is after we have the specific presentations, whoever is going to present something or speak, we'll then hold all the questions to the end uh, of allowing them to present. And then what we'll do is we'll actually go down the list. Um, so we'll start with, um, you know, D1, go all the way to D10, and then open it up for that. And everybody will have a chance to speak. We'll actually do two rounds. Um, so everybody will have first round to be able to speak, and then the second round to be able to speak. Um, I'm not giving you a time limit on that unless we start to see that time goes over. And um, what we'll do is um, we'll do that, at least for the citizens to be heard. That will be a three minute to start with. So. Um, once we get into that, um, we'll, we'll do that. But any questions so far before we get started? Nope. Fantastic. Okay. Um, see, so do we have any public comments from citizens today? And I miss uh, Teresa. I believe you have um, something to present. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I appreciate you having uh, having the, the citizens to be heard on a special occasion. But when I went through the agenda, I thought that this was something I should share with you. Um, so I sent in an email regarding Kitchen Campus, the nonprofit um, at which I'm uh, developing right now, and it's been yeah, in do, development. Uh, real fast, do you mind doing an introduction for yourself, kind of your name and who you are and who you work for? I apologize. Yes. Sure. Um, so uh, my name is Teresa Canales. Um, the organization I'm here today to represent um, is Kitchen Campus. 
And Kitchen Campus is a nonprofit on the west side of San Antonio, um, and we're actually located inside of Family Service Neighborhood Place, but we are an independent nonprofit organization. And I'm, um, I was corresponding with the commission today to let you know that we will soon be launching the first industry driven registered apprenticeship program in Texas developed by the uh, culinary hospitality restaurant industry. We've been working um, with partners at all three levels, federal, state, and local to, um, to make this the best program that we can, that we can have and to set it up as a, to set the standard and a high standard um, in San Antonio for upskilling current workers, current industry workers in specific high need areas. Um, and then we also wanna to continue to create this model to continue to develop um, current industry workers uh, for continued training and job growth opportunities. As well, we are uh, building a small business development business literacy program, and we kind of detailed that a little bit in the email. But I look forward to sharing more of this information with the commission and talking about how our nonprofit might be able to develop some of the needs um, of small businesses, and specifically in the culinary, hospitality, and restaurant industry. Um, we will also be sharing some numbers with you about how those um, specific groups like chefs to cooks and bakers play out in the different um, municipal areas. And I think I'm finished, unless I ask if y'all have any questions or if I just so say before, thank you for your time. Fantastic. So mm -hmm. before I open up to questions, thank you. Um, if you I'm sorry. Mind, go for it. Please. Here. Yes. My apologies. Public comments only are to be received where we cannot ask questions or interact. She must make Sounds consent. Good. Thank okay. you. Sounds good. All right, um, so what I'd like to do is just ask uh, Ms. Teresa if you go ahead and send that documentation in just so we can have that because it is timely. And um, if you go yeah. ahead and mm -hmm. make sure that we get that. Certainly, thank you so much. I went ahead and sent that to Small Biz Info right before the meeting. And again, if there's any, I guess any specific items that you all have, uh, we'll, be, we'll continue to send you information. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be discussing uh, our individual items. So the first one is we're gonna be discussing and talking, uh, taking possible actions on items from the last meeting agenda from February the 8th, 2022 that we're unable to discuss. The first item will be the possible action of citywide programs that can benefit small businesses to include various sample programming and grant a potential American Rescue Plan Act allocation. And then what I wanna do is I wanna remind everybody that we need to allow for everyone uh, to make a comment before any second comments can be made. So we're gonna do a round robin of comments. Um, and so what I'd like to do is, was there a, I guess, uh, Ms. Ulisa, did you want to present something first and we'll start with that and then we'll go ahead and start with district one and then do the round robin from that. Chair. Yes. Hi, this is Christina, City Attorney's Office. Can I, can I make a quick Please. statement before we Go get started? Please. I wanted to remind board members that per the City Ethics Code, um, board members are not permitted to participate in any discussion or deliberation or voting on any matters in which they may have a financial interest in. Um, and that could be whether they're owners of an organization, employees, or board members of an organization. So um, I did receive a copy of the presentation today and I did notice there was a lot of organizations, some money um, proposals on there. So I just wanted to remind everyone on here of that rule. Um, so if you, if you do notice something on there that you're involved in, please abstain from any discussion, um, voting or anything like that. If you have a question, please ask me. So Christina, am I allowed to present this? and exclude myself from voting because I serve on several of these boards. Yes, if you if you if you serve on these boards, you should not be presenting as to receiving funding from the city that would be um, self dealing. So we want to be careful of that. You would be permitted to uh, present on others. Do you want to proceed with 
going over some of the others on the list? Um, I think what my goal is to help us identify what's available in the community as an ecosystem that's supporting our small business and to try to put together not uh, not voting on on any organization it was more of a recommendation of how to spread the arpa funds and um i'd like to continue presenting if that's okay because i think the information is kind of what we've all been looking for, and this kind of brings it all in one presentation. Okay, so Lisa, I think that would be okay uh, if you stick to what the community needs are and not um, gear it toward that kind of a discussion. Okay, um, and what I'm also presenting is what I've seen is um, being supportive already in the community. And so it's not um, identifying new funds for those, it's just what's available, right? Um, and so for, for the commission, I'm gonna see if I can share this. For the commission, what I wanted to do was put together, um, again, when, when, when I put together a budget for my business, I allocated as to very specific where those funds are gonna go. And so what I basically did is put together uh, a, a plan that we can uh, discuss and vote on um, as recommendations. Um, the, the items up at the top, if you'll notice, um, the first part of it is, is the access to capital, but in green, it identifies the number of businesses to be served, the number of dollars to go to each small business, um, and the time period to use those funds, the number of organizations for RFPs. Again, a lot of these um, I'm marking on the side here that RFPs should be sent out so the, these organizations can apply for uh, distributing these funds or participating in a program to do this. Um, what I wanted to do is share with you guys, um, I. I'm basically pulled, I did a lot of research. I pulled off of the, the prior meetings that we've had on this commission and the presentations that have been done by city staff. I also did a lot of research based on um, a lot of my involvement in small business programs and you know participating with uh, a lot of these different organizations. And so, um, so yes, my past 15 years has been spent on supporting small business and so this is a passion that uh, I know many of us on this commission share. And so what I was trying to do is put this in a format that we can all be educated of what's out there, what's available, since we have such limited funds and, and trying not to duplicate something that is available to, to take advantage of. But knowing that we need a location to bring them all together so that when we're recommending for uh, community engagement of awareness of these programs that we include everything available for our small small businesses to have a true resource of everything in one location. And so what I'm going to try to do is go through these items uh, quickly and then um, um, there's going to be one that's um, very important. I know the second stage and so after I'm done with the presentation presentations, I'm going to hand it to Jane because I know she's very passionate about making sure we understand what that means, and then we can open it up for questions. So um, I used the same categories that we had identified, the access to capital, capacity building, um, localism, ecosystem enhancement, and geographic placemaking. And what I basically did is put together some ideas. It doesn't mean this is set in stone. This is an Excel spreadsheet that as we agree to whether we want this to be more money or less number of businesses, the numbers can be easily adjusted, but it, it provides a funding um, amount that um, this commission can say that's how much will go under each category. Um, so the very first one is grants to help small businesses get one-on-one -on -one assistance with CPA help to apply for federal tax credits or ED uh, forgivable loans, anything that will help them take advantage of anything that's available on the federal side that took more 
than uh, an individual to, to do, right? I know I personally used a CPA to put ours together. This is for 100 businesses, $5,000, which is $500,000. Um, emergency rent relief per small business with 35% or more revenue losses, including mortgage payment and utilities as needed. This is one that the commission, the council and the mayor have been requesting. Again, 100 businesses at $20,000 per business, which is total 2 million. Again, at the end, we'll be able to vote on any of these and change dollar amounts um, of, over once we get comments. This one is grants for small business for accounting services, technology, marketing or branding, legal assistance, anything to help them utilize um, and help their businesses uh, accelerate. $200, 200 businesses at 10,000. Um, the loan interest buy down, this is one that the the city is already funding, and I believe the budget is 250,000. Um, the next one is a line of credit program. This is establishing a matching program with local banks to use funds for as collateral and release and reuse over and over as credit is established. Um, this is a different approach than the buy down. This, I spoke to several local banks and they would be interested in participating if we created an RFP that the city would be able to work with some programs. And um, they said, yeah, we wanna be a part of helping our local community and it creates that relationship building that is needed. The um, access to small business loans, um, what I'm saying is uh, referred to SBA and LIF fund. These programs are happening, continue partnering with them, but I don't think that we need to add additional funds as we haven't seen the need that they're running out of it. The next one is capacity building programs. Um, um, I am including a startup business training uh, referred to Launch SA as I know they do a really good job and I know they're also receiving funds from the city for these programs that were presented by staff at a few meetings ago. Um, the next one is a first stage micro to emerging. This is a 12 week fundamental training uh, with expert advisors, hands-on training, six, nine, and 12 month follow-up, um, talking about uh, the fundamentals of every business. This particular one includes $10,000 uh, training per business. Um, and this would go to the agency that actually does the training. The $20,000 grant is for scalability. This is including 200 businesses at $30,000, which is 6 million. Um, the second stage is um, second stage business training. This is something that is happening in other larger cities and has been an amazing program and showing very impactful to the companies that are above a million, but for scalability. This is one that I think Jane Gonzalez has been preaching and we've done a lot of research on it and it actually is a robust program that we really need to consider. Um, it would include 10,000 for the training um, for the organization that does it. And again, RFPs would be accepted for that. And then it would have a $50,000 grant for those businesses to scale up. The reason we're including grants in both of these is because it really ties the commitment of those businesses to uh, be involved and to participate. When we do everything for free, we also know that um, a lot of the times they won't finish the program or they don't make it a priority. The next one is the on-the-job training with pay for small businesses to offer new hires, internships, or current employees to scale up new positions. Um, this is a program, um, I'm not putting any funds on it, but I am saying those in blue should be recommended to somehow be included in the workforce development program because we know that there's funds. And if we're doing workforce development, it should include supporting small business and the entrepreneurship as well. Um, and again, I know we've had several discussions of that. The procurement technical assistant training, um, again, we would continue uh, partnering with UTSA. They're getting funding. I, I don't know the program enough to talk about it, but I would say continue their participation. The mentor protege program with medium and large business, again, uh, no funds being set aside, but continue partnering with Alamo Colleges, as I know that that program is, is helping others. Um, 
the capacity building total is at 15 million, which is almost 50% of the total ARPA funds. Again, this is something we can discuss and decide what we think is best. The localism and utilization, this is something that um, is big on making sure that we're utilizing our local businesses and that we're buying local and, and we're doing everything we can to connect with them. This uh, program, this is to, um, it's for unlimited businesses to register. Um, it's a 200,000, which is 100,000 a year to be able to have um, someone to work with them, connect with them, help the procurement agencies uh, list um, their programs that are available, but really become a one location to, to host this. Um, the next one, meet the buyer matchmaking events. This is something that um, we always say needs to happen. What we want to get away from is cattle calling. We don't need to get in a big giant conference room or a big giant conference, what is it, convention center, bring everybody in there and we're just doing a cattle call. What we're saying is let's do smaller group one-on-one um, -on -one matchmaking fairs that are really connecting business to business or large organizations to business. This particular one is basically saying, let's put RFPs out for 20 organizations at 25,000 per organization to host events twice a year. And it could be offered to local chambers, uh, could be offered to any organization that says we wanna be a part. It could also be very specific to industries um, that are in, in, in the community that would help impact. Um, the next one is uh, matchmaking specific to developing joint venture partnerships. Um, this is one, again, similar to like the one on top, uh, 10 organizations that are going to be very specific to host these events um, that are all about partnering and doing business to business, not just opportunities, but true opportunities to team up and go after certain things together, certain contracts. That localism is at 950,000 of the ARPA funds, 3%. The next one we have here is the ecosystem enhancement. These are wraparound services that would help small businesses, um, small business job fairs to connect small businesses to train applicants. Um, again, this is being recommended in blue to be discussed and uh, done by the workforce development program. Um, daycare incentives or vouchers for small business owners that can issue to employees who need assistance to be able to work. If we have employees that need daycare assistance, this should fall under the workforce development program that's already has funds and doing that program. Um, the bonding assistance program is one that I know is needed um, specifically for construction companies. Um, and I know that the city has allocated 550,000 for it. This one, what I'm saying is, let's look at the SBA bond program. The SBA bond program actually offers up to $5 million per business of bonding if they get in that program, which would be so much more effective and scalable for that business to be a part of. And what I'm saying is allocate those funds down at the bottom and you'll see where it's coming from. Administer small business medical dental vision affordable program. As we all know, the healthcare has always been a hard um, uh, access to it for small business. The cost for small business is four times more than a large business. And this is providing one program that um, the businesses would pay for. The 100,000 would be 50,000 per year to have an organization market it and to uh, help the applicants apply for it. Digital divide for small business in underserved areas of town. Again, I'm saying let's recommend it under the digital divide fund that's already set up for ARPA. And this would be for areas of town that have been designated um, in high poverty. Same thing for healthcare mental health, refer to the ARPA mental health program. We just need to make sure that we're able to incorporate those businesses there. Um, the next one is the Regional Focus Partnership Support Small Business Assistance Centers. Again, this is to establish um, RFPs to go out and get organizations that are supporting small business, but that are uh, willing to commit to 
the outreach, the training, the data management application support system for any of these programs. Um, and this is funds for five organizations to get 250,000 per year for their operating budget. And the reason this is uh, established is because um, we need to make sure that they have the right support, which is the staffing that's going to work with the people. And when we give them $50,000, it's not enough for them to do all that work. And they're the ones that are supporting those, uh, in the businesses in the community. Um, this ecosystem wraparound services is asking for 2.6 million at 8% of the ARPA funds. The next one is the geographic placemaking. Um, this was something the mayor was requesting that he wanted to see to help activate um, some of the empty uh, lease spaces that are around town. And he said, can we do something? And um, some of these programs are already in here. So the matching grants for small business to get facelift reimbursements, some of the uh, Prosper West, I know Sage or Southside Birds were giving out uh, $5,000, $10,000 grants. This um, falls under the general budget of 200,000, but what I'm saying is put more funds in it through ARPA to help 100 businesses at 15,000 each to create another million and a half out of ARPA funds. They can use those funds for exterior repairs, parking signage, lighting. It's all about the facade of the facelift of the business. Um, the next one is the placemaking localization grants for small business to es establish a new business location. This is getting them out of their home and into an actual business environment. It could be an office, it could be a retail store, it could be a restaurant. It would help 200 businesses get 25,000 each, which a total of $5 million. And it's very specific to activation of those areas of town. The next one is the program that's already existing, the fee waiver program, which allows businesses to have certain city development fees, SALs and fee waivers. Um, waived, so it, it helps them um, actually pay for their finish outs and get their, their retail space or restaurants ready to open. Um, if you notice that program only had 550,000, I added the reallocation of the bonding assistance from the top to bring this down to serve more businesses. The last one I have here is the under one roof. This is the small business. Um, this under one roof program is something that's created um, to help businesses and I mean to help um, right now it's to replace roofs in, in high poverty areas of town that have been designated. What I am saying is that we should request for recommendations so that the small businesses in those same areas also have access to replace their roof for their businesses to help uh, protect and assist them. Um, this in total is uh, 6.5 million of the total ARPA funds, which is 21%. And again, I just rounded up to get to the 30 million. The 1.9 is what I could identify out of the research that is coming out of the general budget already and has been approved. The last thing I have here is a few additional recommendations for us to discuss. The established recommendation of including small business capacity building program in the SA ready to work funding to be able to train beyond the ARPA funds. I know that we're requesting 50% of capacity building of the funds to go to capacity building, but what I am saying is that we need to be working on a way to have the workforce development program include the wording that will include small business training you know, beyond the ARPA funds. The next thing is the COSA incentive funding. Any funding that's that the city is funding for TERS, for programming, any or large organizations that are receiving funds um, to establish their business to come into San Antonio, or if they're funding SALs or CPS for anything that it should have a SEBETA requirement a attached to it and tracking to start implementing the SEBETA across other organizations outside of COSA. The establishment of data tracking for each program, this is something that we need to identify a way of how many businesses are really in the community, what size of business are there by the number of employees they have, by industry, by the, um, 
by the district that they're located, somehow we need to have that reporting and measuring where our business is and what's happening to them, not just where they're at, but what is happening to them. Are they growing? Are they, uh, are they reducing? Uh, what, what is happening and which programs are impacting them the most? Uh, number four is review the workforce development program. Specifically, it's how it's impacting small business from where employees are coming from and how many employees are being put back into the small business hiring pool. I know there was an announcement of like 9,000 businesses, 9,000 uh, workers were being trained, and we just need to know that those 9,000 did not come from the small business community and that we didn't put any back into the system to uh, replenish those workers. Number five, establish a small business selection committee to evaluate the RFPs uh, to recommend for approval. I know there's a lot of programs and I don't think that uh, any of our intentions are for city staff to have to run so many programs, but the administration of them hiring and outsourcing is, is really what we're, we're looking for. Uh, number six is the request for Bear County to match uh, the request, this request to assist more small businesses. Um, number seven is request consideration of any unused funds to be applied to small business programs listed above. As we know, there's ARPA funds or general funds or any of the leftover funds, anything we can do, we should be requesting that it goes back into these programs. And the last one is the request to evaluate of the greater, greater SATX to find ways for collaboration and including small business growth and retention. Um, I, if I can, I wanted to hand it to Jane because I really think it's important to share the. Let's yeah, let's go ahead and um, we'll move it over to Jane real fast to be able to to describe what the second stage business is or what a second stage business is, and then what we'll do is we'll do a round robin down the through. But I, I do want to make sure that everybody is aware is that these are recommendations. As a commission, our job is to be to be an advisory commission to council and to other organizations. What we are not gonna do is say that, oh, well, we're designating, let's say 5.5 million. And then if, if it doesn't happen, then, you know, we should be worried about that. We are an advisory commission. This is what our capacity is. Um, what we will do is um, take the time to have everybody have comments on this, but let's first have Jane talk about what a second stage business is, because I do feel there's not a lot of people who know what what those are. Thank you, uh, Jeremy, and thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can go a little bit louder or closer. Okay. Um, thank you so much. And, Julissa, thank you for taking the lead uh, in doing the schedule. I, I sincerely appreciate your time. Uh, but can I ask you, uh, Julissa, can you, uh, for sake of time, can you put up the first sheet of that second stage uh, programming, please? Give me a quick second. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Sorry. Feel free to go ahead and start talking about the origin of it, Jane, because I let's give yourself just, I guess, maybe three minutes, and that way we have time because we do have about um, an hour left. So. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this is something that has been really uh, true to my heart. Uh, second stage programming is a brand new uh, concept for San Antonio, although it's not new uh, for Louisiana, Florida, um, and some of the other uh, cities and states. So what I what I like to do is make a recommendation uh, for our second stage programming. A uh, here's what I would recommend, and then I'm going to go into the details because I know it's uh, like drinking water out of a uh, uh, fire hydrant. I would like to partner with the Edward Lowe Foundation. Uh, they are the expert residents really when it comes to second stage programming. Uh, they understand the, uh, the, I refer to a second stage company as a teenage company versus the micro company. I call them the embryos, the babies. So a second stage is more like a teenage company wanting to go into adulthood. Uh, the Edward Lowe Foundation creates something that's called the System for Integrated Growth. They also have C CEO roundtables, leadership uh, retreat uh, programs, expert leaders, 
Invader SATX. Um, I'd like to create a mentor protege that will be specific only to second stage companies. And also, after we do the uh, the first uh, cohort, I'd like to create maybe a second stage incubator. So what is a second stage company? This is where it gets really exciting. Uh, it's a for-profit for company. Uh, typically, they have revenues between 1 million and 50 million. Uh, they want to grow into an adulthood. They, they want to go beyond where they are into uh, the next level. So they're beyond a startup and they have an aptitude to grow. Why? Why? Ask yourself this question. Why is a second stage company, why are they so important? The reason is because they are considered the workhorses of the, the U.S. economy. Between uh, 2005 and 15, they represented 17% of all U.S. companies, but yet they generated more than two thirds of jobs and two thirds of revenue. And I, I can tell you that after COVID-19, these numbers have probably gotten even higher because a lot of the micro companies pretty much went bankrupt. And there's two states that I want, really encourage you guys to look at, Louisiana and Florida. They have partnered with the Edward Lowe Foundation since 2016 and 17. They have created tremendous amount of jobs. They created uh, economic value back into the economy, and they have um, also been able to grow these companies uh, regionally and nationally. So this concept is really different. In San Antonio, what I say is that a lot of times we spend money on grants to the micros. Second stages really have not been benefiting from anything at all. I really would like to create a program that has succeeded in Louisiana and Florida by taking these second stage companies, I like to maybe uh, start with maybe 10 of them, one from every single district, run them uh, through the Edward Lowe Foundation, preferably through the uh, Greater TX SA, although, you know, what, whatever the, the team uh, decides to do is fine with me. So if you look at the second page, second stage companies, they tend to be overwhelmed, they, they have problems building teams, uh, they do want to grow to last. They're focused on opportunities. Uh, the Edward Lowe Foundation really understands the teenage company. Many people do not understand teenage companies, but they recognize what is uh, some of the issues. Why are they not growing? So the system for integrated growth is one of the major things that they do where they get to bring in the team into these companies to figure out uh, what's preventing, preventing these companies from growing so they can then start adding jobs and, and creating value back into the economy. They have peer perspective roundtables. Uh, there's also a leadership retreat uh, there at the Edward Lowe Foundation. Um, the other thing that I find really exciting is that we can have the opportunity to help these companies export. Imagine that uh, if we can then create the economic value, the, the intellectual property, and the uh, human resources and capital to help these companies start exporting. A uh, mentor protege that could be specific only to second stage companies, a uh, second stage incubator, so that we can show case. Jim Persback from Port San Antonio, he said to me one day, he said, Jane, the one thing that I would love to do, San Antonio has assets. We've got small companies that are real assets, but we never showcase them. And that would be my intent is to get these companies, go through this incubator, do the first uh, cohort, and then showcase these companies, not only to San Antonio, but regionally, nationally, and maybe even exporting. And then uh, the grants. I, I think it's a good idea to make some investments into these second stage companies if, uh, if we can help them you know, create the jobs and do what they need to do to get ready. So the bottom line for me with all this is called economic uh, gardening so that we actually have an ecosystem uh, to help our companies grow locally, organically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go ahead and open up to the different commission members for comments. Let's start with a round robin. So a first round, let's do, uh, let's see, three minutes. And if you need more time, just let me know. Um, let's go ahead and remove the screen share for now, uh, if possible, and then we can bring it up as needed. So let's go ahead. Uh, Natalie, do you mind helping me out with that? Just going through the the list? Sure, we can go by district. Um, so, Ms. Wood, to be first. Uh, good evening. Actually, Henry, do you mind introducing yourself? This is your first time. Give a quick 30, 30 second intro of who 
for yours, your first meeting. So congratulations and uh, welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Henry Woods. I'm with the Innovative Construction Group. Uh, I'm a small company electrical contractor. Um, that's pretty much it. I've been in business about three years now. I'm trying to grow uh, and I'm honored to be on the committee. And my take on what she said, uh, yeah, it sounds pretty interesting, and and uh, I need to look at it a little bit further. But I, I I support it from what I've what I've seen so far. Sounds good, and and, and I think if anything, Henry, um, what I want to do is to see if we do not feel we have enough time to be able to put this is a a, a tremendous amount of information we could look to vote on it on the next call or the next meeting. But I mean, this is a great place to start. So what I recommend is as we go through this. Please look at this as a place to start uh, a great set of recommendations and Hulisa, thank you for pulling this together. I think this gives everybody the visual framework of what we've been looking for. So. Cool. Okay, so next would be well, Jane just presented. Do we want to do her next? She'd be the next. No, let's, one. Sorry, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to do. Um, Mr. Pulva. I, I do enjoy the recommendations. I I was looking at the second stage business companies and the development. I happen to agree with Jane as far as the um, focusing on those. Not that there's anything wrong with the startups and the micros. However, the numbers of the micros and the, and the small businesses were really affected as far as the economy and support only because they don't have the foundation to really grow on. And I think one of the things that we're having to look at and it's, and it's difficult as it is at this point is really stimulating our economy again and looking at the second stage businesses with support of the way Julissa kind of presented the resources. The only concern that I have is do we have proven data that these, these uh, incubators have actually produced and, and given us the deliverables that we're, are, able gonna, are able to support the second stage? I like the recommendations on there. The other concern too is how much time and how much resources are we going to be going through as far as creating additional RFPs and then I don't want to spend too many more time having to reestablish these financial institutions if we have some that are already qualified that are in our CVRs already through this through the system through EDD. So are there current uh, small businesses, financial institutions that are, they themselves are second stage that are going to be able to interact or do we, are we going to be looking at focusing at corporate level to help small businesses? And we already have that mentor to protege program, but the concern that I have is are the second stage businesses using this type of foundation, are they still going to get lost again? And are we going to focus on making sure that they're elevated and really educated at what we're really trying to help them accomplish and succeed in? I know EDD has a lot of great programs. I know that we have a lot of great advocates. I like what we're seeing as far as identifying different areas, but do we have best practice right now? And do we have proven methods with sustainable data of deliverables that have actually been able to be tracked? That have helped small, micro, and second stage. So those are the kind of concerns that I have as far as the plans that we're going to put into place. I love, again, I'm going to reiterate, I love the second stage focus because we do have data that's going to, that's able to um, I guess speak to it and show proven methods. And I'm very open to seeing what will we have new. Uh, as far as what we designated. I would like to be able to take time to really process it and see where it's going to be the best benefit as far as what Julissa presented to us. It's a great presentation, but I would like to kind of deep dive a little bit more to be able to contemplate what we have so we can make the best recommendation to EDD. Thank you. Okay, so we'll have Ms. Willoughby next. Hello everyone. Hi, this is Vicki Willoughby. Um, I really enjoyed the matrix and everything that Julissa had to say. Um, the recommendations sound um, really interesting and I'm 
open to learning more about some of these. Um, one of the things that I would um, like to put on the table is that, um, as we know, Bear County is comprised of about what 97% of uh, small business and of that, um, uh, about 49% of it is micro. So it'll, so um, with that being said, one out of every two businesses is a micro business. So I think it would only be um, quite natural and uh, quite right to help recommend that we do low barrier grants for uh, micro businesses, I guess probably within the 20 to 22 employee range or so, and help put more emphasis on the micro business since they do account for 49% of all small business. Um, another thing is that, um, you know, maybe just so that they don't get eaten up by uh, some of the other um, larger allocations. Um, but, um, and with that, you know, I mean, I also believe that Lift Fund did such a wonderful job at allocating um, past grants and that, you know, of course, we should keep things as status quo with Lift Fund, even if they have to um, hire more employees to help reach capacity to get out some of these um, hopefully low barrier grants out. And then again, put an emphasis uh, within that on first time applicants since um, a lot of people within these micro businesses, um, they don't get word of what is going on and they don't know what is out there. So maybe we can help, you know, do some outreach and, um, and put some emphasis for these first time applicants. Um, the, um, I guess, you know, y'all, the old program that we had, the hospitality grant, the framework is obviously there. So we can also help utilize that to continue um, to put forth some of this out there. Um, but um, other than that, then um, the matrix, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I think I'm looking forward to hearing more about some of these programs that were available and out there. Um, but I thank you very much for y'all's time and for allowing me um, to be a part of this group. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next will be Mr. Tempu. I think you're on mute. Continued phrase of 2022, right? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I started talking on mute. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So I, I was saying that I really appreciated the two presentations, especially the first one that had that breakdown on how we are recommending that these funds should be distributed. And uh, one of the things too, I'm thinking is that uh, they give more concern about programs like a UTSA or Alamo Community Colleges. Uh, what we really need now for a quick turnaround, for a quick recovery of small businesses that are in distress would be uh, like training that ranges from maybe one month to six months, not a long time uh, degree program. And uh, if we could recommend such programs to small businesses uh, that might really help uh, retrain their workers and make sure their workers are performing uh, at their best so that they can uh, be able to recover from the economy. And I also uh, want to say something that the last speaker spoke on, uh, Wiki. She, she talked about outreach and uh, first time applicants. Usually, I believe that maybe half of San Antonio is not aware of uh, these assistance. So if we can actually publicize it and make sure the little power mom that uh, stores, the corner stores, the little ones who are not open on the internet, they are not aware. I don't know how we can organize that maybe by district by district within the city to make sure that those little People that a five thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars will make a huge gain. For, I mean, a huge impact on them to be able to recover from the COVID hit. That might also be uh, be very important for us. So, if we can also devise a means of talking to these small businesses, knowing where they are, uh, that will help a lot. And uh, also, well, we. 
Do, I don't, I'm not yet seeing whether we have any recommendations on how to apply for, for these funds. Because usually people hear that the funds are available and after some time, the next thing is that they were distributed already. So is, is there a deadline to apply and uh, how do we get the application, the format, and uh, where to deposit the application? So if we can uh, create this information and maybe uh, distribute it through the city, maybe local churches, maybe bars, maybe any places or soccer games, you can print flyers and distribute at the game. Just make sure that the city is aware of what is going on and uh, most small businesses take advantage of this opportunity and see whether they're going to be able to recuperate from the COVID hit. So my main concern is uh, on the modalities for distribution and the, uh, the availability of the information to all small businesses so that they will choose to apply or not. And then um, we have, this is not the first time they're giving out the funds. So it will have some reports from some of those companies uh, who benefited from the funds and became successful and now they can uh, they are back on their feet as well as those that benefited from the funds and did not become successful and are not back on their feet just to understand what are the factors that will bring in a difference because if you collect this money and just distribute it as uh, salaries to people and uh, not care about revenues your business generating revenues you're going to run out of the money and the business will still collapse. But if you collect this money and uh, think of making better products, if you're making tacos, maybe you try to make bigger tacos so people come there because your size is... And uh, so you will be able to sell and generate revenues and uh, pay your workers from the revenue. Because if people are going to collect the money, the assistance and use it as a basic salary to the workers, then it's of no use because we can't pay workers for businesses now and not bring in any revenues. So I, I, I would like that uh, probably we dig into it, get more information and uh, present it maybe at the next meeting or any other time so that before we share the fault, before we recommend it to the council to distribute the funds. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next will be Mr. Eropos. We did we skip over Renata? No, I was on four. Um, and then five is gone, so it's moving right along. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, this is obviously a tremendous amount of work, and um, uh, so thank y'all for doing that in a relatively short amount of time. I think it's really impressive. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about as you know, I see the breakdown in the different numbers, which again, it's, you know, you're bringing ideas to the table and I recognize that the value of that and starting to shape our, our direction for our recommendations. I think, you know, I feel a little bit, I, I would just want to know, I think more than anything, phrase it that way, what percentage of the proposed funding would go directly to small businesses? Um, versus going to agencies that would serve small businesses. Um, I think it's just something for us to keep in mind as we finalize these recommendations. Um, and, you know, I think that's not to say that that we shouldn't have a robust percentage of the funds go to small business serving agencies, particularly if the emphasis is going to be on how do we make our communities, small businesses stronger. But I do think we should be cognizant of what that percentage is. Um, the other thing, you know, I think. I am wondering about the, the training monies associated with those first stage and second stage verticals. Um, I think I understand that you know, it takes time and effort to do that kind of work. Um, but if you think about you know, $10,000 per small business for 200 businesses, um, that being a million dollars a year, over the course of two years for, for training for 200 businesses. I would just want to be really clear about how much time and attention each individual business would get 
because I could see running that kind of program cohort style. And then, you know, I know that one of the assumptions there is that there are one or two agencies that are providing that kind of support and training. So maybe it's a matter of there's a whole ecosystem of agencies that need to be compensated. And maybe that's how it breaks down to a more manageable figure. But, um, you know, I, I can't see paying an agency or two agencies $500,000 or a million dollars a year for, for training for 200 businesses. Um, so I, I would just want to continue that conversation. And I'm not saying that that's something that seems like, no, we definitely shouldn't do that. But I would like to talk about that more. Um, and my my third thing was related to the second stage businesses, which is not a vertical that I am intimately familiar with. It's not the kind of business that I run. Um, I run a micro business, but I think that to um, Vicki's point about how many businesses in our community are micro businesses, I think that we'll probably receive some feedback um, as it currently stands with just wanting to know more about how big that second stage vertical actually is within our community. I see that there's some data in the presentation that relates to national level um, second stage companies. And I think that I would be curious to know a little bit more about what the demand is here in our community um, as, as it relates to figuring out, um, you know, how much funding should go specifically to that sector of our small business community as we allocate those funds. But again, great work and thank you all for bringing ideas to the table. I think, you know, it's really what's going to move the process forward. Okay, so next we have Sarah Shockfield. Yes, um, thank you ladies for all your hard work. That was uh, very, um, it was in depth and it's a great place to start. Um, I still need time to digest uh, the this presentation because I feel I just need more time to better understand how we can divide up this pie, but it's, like I said, it's a great starting point. I do love the idea of um, not only providing financial support, but creating an avenue for education resources and maybe even mentorship programs. So these um, micro and small and second stage businesses can grow and stand on their own two feet. You can you can throw as much money at businesses as you want, but if they don't know how to expand and grow, you, they're just going to they're going to be stagnant. And that's not what we want in San Antonio. Um, I also like the idea of the data tracking. I think we can build upon that and it will make this process over time a lot easier once we have all that data uh, compulated. Um, as well as localism, I think that's very important too. Maybe creating a local database or something. I'm not sure about that. We can build upon that. Um, I would also like to look at the mental health aspect of this, mental health resources. Um, because in all honesty, due to COVID, there's been an overload of stress for a prolonged period. So we need to we we need to address that situation as well. Not only I would say for the small for the employees, but also for business owners themselves, an avenue they can go down to uh, be able to be able to feel like you know we we have a venting point, we have a strategy and a plan. But this was a great presentation. Thank you. Natalie, I'm going to punt me to the end. So we'll just skip me and then I'll come back to me. I was already planning that. So we're good. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jim Hollerbeck. Unmute here. Uh, first, Elisa, this is a, uh, that was fantastic. Um, you know, and it's obvious that you've been doing this for a while and you know where all the, Offices are and where all the resources are. The city is serving a lot of boards. For me, coming into this commission as just a local business owner for a long time, and you know, maybe I'm a little naive to a lot of things, but I learned a lot. And you have you have to know where to go to get a lot of the information that you put together. That was well done, and I love the idea of using it as a springboard going forward. Um, saying that, I have a question for staff for city staff. Are y'all are y'all working in tandem um, on this? Are you looking for programs to spend the thirty million dollars, or 
Are you doing this in, internally as well as we are as a commission working on this? Um, so previously staff had been asked to pull a list like this. Um, and we also mentioned that staff had previously pulled kind of prior to us back had provided a presentation um, or I should say a proposal to city leadership um, that of course was put on hold for us back conversation. Um, we received this information uh, last night, uh, so haven't really had a, a chance to look at it, but it certainly is, um, you know, something that staff has been looking at as well. Um, for example, uh, one of the things that Anna and I have spent a lot of time talking about is second stage companies having been trained at the Edward Lowe Foundation, having implemented um, an economic gardening program in the past. It's something that we've talked about. Um, so we're excited about that. I think we ideally would have uh, liked to have had a, a separate presentation on that. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about youth entrepreneurship, and that's something that um, we didn't necessarily see in it. So I don't know that it's necessarily separate or tandem. I think, um, you know, we just, now that we have this list, I think from a staff perspective, we will certainly go back and, and try to provide some um, insight, maybe some thoughts. Um, some of the dollar amounts were a little off, for example, and so we will certainly try to work with it now that we received it. Um, and then with uh, whatever feedback you all provide, um, there's some things that, again, are um, a little more challenging because they impact programs that are already approved. Um, you know, using budget dollars. So there's there's certain protocol and things like that associated with it as well. So we're kind of learning as we go along on this particular proposal, but um, there's, there's definitely some insight and some feedback that we would also be providing that we've been asked to, to do after we have a chance to look at it. Very good. I was, I'm just curious, because I know that if we're doing a lot of stuff and you're doing the same thing, you know, maybe we could share resources or share some information there. Right, we would hopefully uh, certainly hope so. Great. The um, the other thing that's been mentioned by several people here already is data tracking. I think for me, that's a big deal. Um, uh, Jane presented the program that she's talking about and with Edward Lowe has success. They have measurables. Maybe we can, you know, if, if not somehow a partnership or figure out a measurable solution for a lot of the data tracking data tracking on this on the second stage businesses and so forth. And the other thing I wanted to mention, you know, we talk about the micro businesses and startups and then now the teenagers. What about us old guys? You know, what about the adults? What about the veteran businesses? There's a lot of them that have been in business for a long time that went down the tubes with COVID. Don't forget about those guys too. So keep that in the back of your mind when we're putting programs together and thinking along those lines. So, and Jeremy, that's all I've got for now. I have a whole sheet of stuff to talk about, but. Um, you wanna take another minute to go through maybe some of those real fast? Uh, well, uh, and Rick mentioned, you know, we gotta get the word out. So whatever the process is or whatever, whatever the uh, uh, is decided, it, it's about communication. And we're all here in the business, we know that you know, if you can't market your business, you, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. You got to be able to get the word out. What's available out there? What resources? I know I've talked to this and the city, the staff has mentioned that the relationships with the local chambers and, and other organizations and really appeal to these folks. But it is getting the word out to the small business owners you know, that these things are, that these opportunities are available if the money's there. So um, let's see, what was another one? Um, uh, in the in one of the presentation, one of the items, line items, it was about uh, the facades of businesses and giving money to um, the businesses to improve and, and to get people into rentable space. I think that was something that the, was on the mayor's agenda as well. Read in the paper this morning, one in five employees are working from home. So that is something to really think, put in the back of your head. You know, one in five of these employees are not going to an office. They're going to be doing what we're, a lot of y'all are doing right now. Uh, is is it working from home? So businesses have to be have the resources to to be able to support 
uh, at home workers. Not everybody does. Uh, it was we've outsourced for a long time in our business, but now we're doing more from home. People working from home. It's a whole it's a whole new thing for us as well. So, but that keep that in your minds as well as we go forward. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that for now. So, Fantastic. I did like the line of credit. I did do it too. That was good. I like that. Doesn't have to be a grant. Doesn't have to be a loan. It can be a line of credit. So that's really line of credit is a loan, but it's still it's something that a lot of people don't take advantage of. Thank you. Good job, Natalie. Do you have anybody else, or is it just me left? That's it. You chair. Fantastic. Okay, so first of all. Uh, Julissa, thank you. This this is absolutely fantastic. I actually uh, question real fast before I speak. Go for it, real fast, Julissa. I, I just wanted to say, Jeremy. I know before you close the loop, the sure. the one of the things that I wanted to to see if we can get from staff is how much um, how much money is spent or paid to the workforce development organizations that are training the workforce today, like per per applicant. Um, again, they're going through a uh, workforce training, they're getting paid something and, and it would be ideal for us if we could know what that is. Um, the other thing is that I, I think it is it is very uh, it is very critical that we start working in collaboration with this commission with, with city staff, right? The intention was to create something that brings us the ideas of what's out there Again, I don't work in the city staff. I just know what I could do research on, right? But um, working in tangent with whether we divide up in subcommittees or just have individual meetings and come back to present is something that I've really been struggling with with this commission because we don't have the opportunity to do work sessions in a way that we can brainstorm and, and share, right? And so just wanted to share that because I think going forward, it's something that we we need to do the other thing is that I'm I'm a very big advocate for um, um, new programs, new way to activate, new way to make sure that we're tracking. If if we've been doing something a certain way and we're getting the results we have today, that means we got to look for new ways to do things. And so um, that is what I was hoping to be able to bring ideas for this commission to say. I like this. I don't like this. I agree with everything you guys are, are commenting on. It, it just goes to say that we still have more work to do, right? And I know that, uh, Brenda, your team is working hard. And if there's other things that weren't identified here, we want to know about it because we want to be all inclusive when we're making decisions on how to support you better so that you can support the, the work that's happening with your group. And so I just wanted to say that and, uh, um, that's it, Jeremy. Sounds good. Uh, before I go, Vice Chair, do you have anything to comment before I start? Actually, you know, hearing everyone's comments, and I appreciate it, Chair. Thank you for recognizing me. Um, I, I think one of the issues that we had here in, in the beginning is the fact that we didn't really know what this commission's, I guess, path was, the identification, what we have. From the from the creation of this commission, we've been able to identify how we can meet, how we can't meet, and I think that was part of the education that was missing. Um, you know, Christine just educated us when we're involved in other committees. We have to have the foresight to know that we have to recuse ourselves and understand that. And I think that's part of the education that we, we've had from the beginning. Is we're get, we're being presented great information. But we didn't know what lane to stay in and unfortunately because of certain laws and certain requirements that's an area that we were not towards because of lack of our understanding not on behalf of the staff of ours and as we're identifying that by being presented with all this education i think moving forward um, to address Felicia's, uh point just now is we need to initiate those appointments with the staff so staff can educate us so we're not running under assumptions because it has delayed so many things on us being productive to be able to move forward because we as committee members were running as commission members were running under 
previous experience or lack of. And so now that we're being presented this information to address what Brenda said, I don't want us to duplicate and waste more energy and time because to address to what Mr. Um, what Rick said is right now, time is critical. We have doors closing at a rapid pace and we need to address our needs and how we get to that point with not jeopardizing what we're required to do by law and we have to stay within those requirements. So that's what I have to say, Chad. Thank you for recognizing. Yeah, thank you. Um, ooh, this is a this is a good one. Um, I, I'm I'm proud of everybody here. This is fantastic stuff, and I completely agree. It's difficult because we are small business owners. As small business owners, you are meant to be scrappy. You are meant to be look for resources to get the job done, no matter what the obstacle is. And for us as small business owners, there is no such thing as an obstacle. So it's been very difficult for us, and I'm sure we're all agreeing, to sit there and say, we're only a commission. We're only allowed to be advisors. We're not allowed to get our hands dirty. All of us being successful small business owners, all of us have had to get our hands dirty. And, and you know, there are times when you don't pay yourselves to be able to make sure your, your team gets paid, right? You do the jobs you need to get done. So it's been the hardest thing, I think, for all of us to kind of refrain ourselves from knowing what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. So I think, you know, commend everybody on how far we've come. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, for, for our new members, you know, Ryan coming in and Henry joining and Jane just recently, it's been a struggle at first, but I think we've hit our stride. So I'm really proud of everybody who have gone so far. Um, as, as far as Felisa, I think this is great. I, I completely echo everybody else. This is a springboard. It's a fire hose of fantastic information that I think everybody needs to absorb. Um, I am actually going in there and, and I'm nerdy enough to where I'm looking at the formulas. I'm looking at everything, trying to see how it was done and what was been put together. Um, I started taking some notes myself about further writing out the subcategories, um, explain the difference between immediate needs versus uh, future needs, right? Cart before the horse, like something needs to be a foundation today before something else can go into play. Um, talking about uh, different startup or business types, right? There's a startup, there's a second stage, there's the mature businesses, even as, as Jim was talking about, right? Uh, those programs, programs that be considered primary, secondary, even tertiary programs that could be a stretch. But one of the other things we have to recognize is that most of these or almost all of these will be considered for solicitation, right? We can make the recommendation, but just understand we can make every recommendation we want but city council can do whatever they want. They could throw away the entire document and say, thanks guys, but we're gonna do our own thing and we have to be willing to accept that because we are an advisory commission. So it's one of those things we're gonna put our best efforts forward. Um, we've done a great job of communicating that. And so I, I'm really proud of, of really, um, yeah. And, and as far as I think what we're gonna do today and, and I'll wrap up my stuff, but I think we're gonna do today, we probably won't have time to do a second round today. And I have some ideas of how we can do this. Um, and let me finish off this other part first. So 97% uh, of small businesses, I think we need more data. I'm gonna actually go in and look at dynamics reports. I have a subscription to Statista and Statista allows me to go in and pull in data reports to be able to show things to back. Uh, we need, like I said, we need to add in micro. I love this. Um, rows here in the capacity building first stage, second stage. I really feel like there needs to be um, a, a row in there about micro companies because they need to be recognized. Um, we need to talk about exactly amounts that should go directly towards businesses versus agencies. I think for every single one of these, we could give an allocation. Um, we need to talk about, um, and this is actually one that and Anna, thank you for this recommendation. We talked about this in our past meetings, but we talked about where companies are. There's three different stages where companies are. The first one is companies are completely underwater. They are like trying to keep their head above water from drowning. And if you just give them $10,000 cash, oh my gosh, it saves them. It saves them from getting evicted from their home. It saves them from something, but it's that immediate cash need. Then there's those ones who are basically in maintenance mode, right? They're trying to fix things. And then there's ones that grew. There's those companies that are in high growth mode, but we can't just say, oh my gosh, we only can support the ones that are underwater. 
we have to support all of them equally, but we have to understand where each one is and, and their stages may change. A company that's in underwater today, if they have that little bit of money to be able to buy something, uh, a resource that they need, they could then turn into a maintenance company or then turn into a growth company. So we need to identify this. Um, and so what I've done, just so you know, um, I was on a great call this this past week um, with, with uh, Councilman Plyas around EWDC, and I, I've ran into a few city council members. I know some of y'all have put me on a call individually, me and you have gone on with members of, of city council. And what I've talked to them about are two big key dates that are coming up. I wanna make you all aware of that. The first one is March 22nd. March 22nd is a day that the EWDC is going to have their strategy session. They're going to sit in a room. Uh, hey, go for it, uh, Brenda, if you'd like to speak real fast. Oh. I think, though, the two dates that you're talking about may have had a change as of last night. Oh, ooh, so, what happened? Okay, go for well, it. Well, so I assume you were going to talk about EWDC on the 22nd and City Council yes. strategy session on the 23rd. Correct. Um, unfortunately, the strategy session for City Council has been moved to the morning of March 22nd, which is pre the EWDC meeting. So <laughs> EWDC is still the afternoon of the 22nd. Um, okay. So what what we were hoping to get out of this meeting today yes. um, was a recommendation to present to EWDC on the 22nd. We have a game plan so for that. Yeah. So that then um, they, the EWDC members, would be informed about that recommendation as they went into the council strategy session. However, with the council strategy session now being pre EWDC, that's something we're still trying to figure out. Okay. So th this Since is. Since we won't um, be able to present it. Yeah. And so I, I have an idea around this. Um, and, and it'll have to take the first maybe 15 to 20 minutes for the March 8th meeting, because I know this is a ton of information to get. Um, so what I've, I've spoken to members about, and just so you know, those two meetings, what we wanna do is get a document to them before that meeting to be able to give our menu, to give our list of everything. So here's my recommendation. I recommend that we all take the time between now and next week. This is next Tuesday, we have a week. You individually go in, look at the information, pull more data, right? Pull as much as you can. Send that to me. Send that specifically to me, but also to to Anna or to Anna, and then to to Brenda, and we'll be able to then compile this together so we have an equal um, set of information from everybody. I will work day and night to be able to gather that all into a document, and that way we can look at something that everybody can approve and push that forward. Um, and vote on quickly in the March 8th meeting, because if I were to ask you to vote on this today, I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of objections, right? Because it's a ton of information. Um, so that's what I wanna do. As far as the document that I want to, Christina, did you have something or? Yeah, so uh, chair, I was going to say that if we were to compile a list or a document, the recommendation would go to staff so when, okay. staff is de when staff is developing a program, there's a lot of steps that staff has to do to make sure that the program is viable. Um, they can visit other departments to see if a department has had uh, or currently has the same program or, um, or they've done the program before. They discuss it with city attorney's office to make sure it's even legal sure. to spend city money in this way or <clears throat> make sure it complies with ARPA requirements. So sure. the recommendation would go to staff. Staff would look it over, then discuss with city manager, and then try to get this on a council committee. I know there were some issues about right. when the different meetings would happen, um, but th that's what I wanted to say, that the recommendation would be to staff. You're talking about the final recommendation. Is it possible for members of the commission to be able to send in their inputs? For sending in, they can send to staff. We do not want okay. to start an email chain where everyone is okay. um, discussing. Yeah, we want to be sure we're not running afoul of Open Meetings Act. Um, okay, let's do that then. Okay, uh, uh, before I say that, Juanita, do you have something to add to that? I did. I Just for clarification, Christina, he had actually eliminated everyone 
one where he would be the only one and staff, each individual, not a chain. So we would direct the justice staff, but to CC our chair. Yes, yes, not a response, but just to staff CC our chair to prevent the walking quorum. Just for clarification, that's correct. Correct. Thank you, Juanita. Is that still yes, doable, Christina? If they send it, if they send it, if I'm included in the email to both Brenda and Dana. Correct. Yay. Thank you, Juanita. Okay, so what's going to happen is before that meeting on the 22nd, I want to make sure they don't have it that morning. They have, they don't have it the day before. They at least have a full few days to mull over it. It's going to be a very detailed document. Um, we're gonna we're talking about academic. Uh, okay, Juanita, go for it real fast. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Can you give yeah. us a deadline so that way staff has ample time to receive it? I just don't. I don't want them under under the yeah. The, let, let me let me say my part and then I'll see what from Brenda and Anna's standpoint, what's our deadline that we need to give all those recommendations to. But back to what I was saying, this document is going to be an academic style, very detailed document that not only includes this matrix, but it includes a list of all the categories, all the subcategories. It's then going to have modalities that are associated with that that represent then the matrix. It's going to have. Um, definitions of what we as the SBAC define as a micro versus first stage, second stage. So that way, council, when they read it, they are completely aware of our interpretations of things. I know there's SBA, I know there's everything else. There's also going to be recommendations on immediate money that goes towards things. There's going to be also um, recommendations for long term money, cart before the horse, right? Which program should get money first, which program should get money second. There's also going to be um, an understanding of where those companies are, if we're talking about those underwater companies or maintenance companies or growth companies. So this can be a very detailed document and that way they're going to have the ability to look at that. They can do what they want with it, but we will have what we're saying. And this will be uh, a letter that I'll write as the chair to the SBAC. Um, it'll be fully disclosed to um, the, our staff and that way it goes to council and everybody gets to see that. And this would be our recommendations from the full group. Uh, Jane, question. Yeah, Jeremy, thank you so much for. Sure. I'm just a little bit confused if you can help me. Uh, so the recommendations are going to be going uh, from the commissioners directly to staff. Uh, are we then going to meet again with the final recommendations before you go? So that's the, our our timeline because we cannot work outside of our meetings. We have to do this at the beginning of the meeting on the 8th and we have other things. I know that I've been speaking to staff about some other presentations that they would like to do to inform us. As we start to move forward into the meeting, so they have some things they want to do, but I want to carve out a very small specific time uh, to do that. Brenda question. Uh, Jeremy, I'm sorry. My answer my question is not answered. Okay. My uh, and maybe it's my fault. I, 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 sure. I apologize. What I want to know is that there's going to be a lot of feedback that's going back to staff. Are we going, are, is our team, the commissioner, is going to have an opportunity to, to look at the final recommendations? We will, uh, my, my goal is for you all to see that before the meeting on the 8th, so we can all see it on the meeting on the 8th and then vote on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sure. Brenda? Yeah, I was just going to express some concern about okay. how much time. I mean, we we spent so this meeting today was going to be the conversation and the uh, effort, um, the agenda item number four from the prior meeting to yeah. try to get some recommendations and get what council and EWDC has been asking for. Um, we clearly aren't there yet, and so while staff is very anxious and I'm hesitant. Um, I'm not going to look at my team members on this call right now. Um, I am because there's so many things we should be talking about. I know it was mentioned earlier about what the role of SBAC is and ARPA is just one piece of the many, 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 many other things that should be discussed. We had 
a lot of those other items lined up for the eighth. I know workforce, there was an update on that now that those contracts have all been executed. Strategic plan, we would like you all to be involved in the strategic plan discussion and wanted some feedback. However, I say that with concerns about not having enough time to really put thought and conversation into such a proposal. Um, there are so many opportunities for discussion on what was presented today that I know I think staff would certainly like to have some input in and I think yeah. many on this call would like to have input on and receiving it, you know, today, last night, even providing feedback for us to then turn that around, there's just not going to be enough time. So I just want to throw that out there as a concern with with only taking like 15, 20 minutes in the next meeting. So my thought is, it's a tough one. So there's two routes to it in my head. One of them is you take time to discuss the next meeting. That could go an hour and a half. That could go 15 days straight. Uh, I don't see this commission, you know, holding back on their conversation. The other route could be from the inputs that are given between now and then, those inputs are then given uh, to staff. I'll be CC'd on that, so it's a one way. And that way, everybody has equal sets of inputs. I'll, I'm, I can work all night to do my stuff, so I'll be able to help consolidate that fairly based on everybody's things into this report and then write it up. And then obviously I know that staff needs to be able to look at that to approve it because anything that filters through to council, you guys should see. And so based on that, I can do the legwork on that. That way I'm sure. just taking everybody's inputs. Go for it. Yep, so just on, on sure. making sure I'm understanding, it's gonna be a one way, but at what point are the commission or the, the members gonna be able to so let's say Katie has a great idea. She thinks it's a great idea, but then um, Vicki does not think that that's a great idea at all. At what point is there going to be discussion? Uh, because this, that's the this, hard part. Doc, this document is not going to be able, staff will not be able to pass this document back out because then when we have issues with walking quorum, so we can't be passing notes outside of the meeting to try to come to a consensus deliberation, discussion, consensus, consensus has to happen at an open meeting. Um, so I, I think I, I'm gonna reiterate Brenda's concerns with, can this happen in a short period of time at the next meeting? I'm not sure that it can, um, but it would need to be in an open meeting with that discussion that would need to happen. I agree. So the thing is we'd have to, we all need to agree. Do we do, we do it to where we all send our inputs and that input's going into a single doc? And then we go from there and, and let me finish this and Lisa, you can say something and, and then, um, or do we open up time for discussion? But I guarantee you, if we go into discussion mode and take up the March 8th meeting, it's gonna go for at least an hour. And that way, a lot of the things that staff really needs to show us, because like I said, ARPA is one very small thing, very small thing, that's gonna be, uh, we're not gonna get the, that, that ability to look at other things, uh, Lisa. Yes, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So um, the ARPA funds is what we need to propose um, on the 8th, right? The other stuff that the the wish was that we want of all the other things that is beyond that, is that due also on the 8th? What we're trying to do is get something in front of them before those tw the meetings on the 22nd. And I think the question is for staff, is that um, Brenda, what, um, because I'm, I'm just wondering the way that the programs were presented today was very brief. It was not a whole presentation. It's there was 20 something programs. Like if there's stuff that the staff can tell us, these are the ones that um, we want you to consider even your recommendations to some of the stuff that was presented today would be ideal to hear from staff because you guys are working it. Um, again, this is just an idea coming from from my side. It's not a, 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 a it has to be this way. It's just an idea of what can we do. Um, I think that that would be important to hear. And I don't know if that's something um, you can brief us now, or, or if it has to be on the next agenda. But 
uh, I know that you also have the strategic plan that's coming up, which I think those are things that we have to be a part of and just uh, put it on our calendar. When is it coming so that we're, we know that those are things we have to attend, but I don't know that it has to be part of an actual agenda um, at this meeting or, or is that the intention to do those? Yeah, so we have specific discussion items that we had at the next meeting. Now, I think we have a couple of, of items at play here. So again, what city council and EWDC had asked for is not the direction that SBAC is going in. What EWDC and council had asked for was to allow the opportunity to have that identify their priorities and kind of their target outcomes, which is now on March 22nd. And then from there, ASPAC would take that and identify opportunities for ARPA funding to be utilized and to recommend, you know, as we went into April, May, and so forth. Um, Cause again, the original timeline was March for council, April for EWDC conversation and then money comes in in May. So kind of works through that April, May timeline for specific recommendations. In the conversation that Jeremy mentioned earlier with council member Polias, who is chair of EWDC, um, he said he certainly supported EWDC, or excuse me, SBAC providing um, the, the five priorities that you guys had all previously identified, some like program examples and, and provide a little bit more detail to that. Um, it was not discussed providing the deep level of detail that was presented today. So again, we're, where staff is a little challenged with is we are given direction to, from city leadership and city council in one direction, and then SBAC clearly wants to, to pursue and provide the recommendation. So we're kind of trying to find that balancing, that balance act um, of, of how to support what you all want to do without getting out ahead of, of mayor and council. Um, so, so what Anna was going to present today was that framework around what, uh, what the conversation Jeremy and myself and Alex Lopez had with council member Polias, chair of EWDC last week to try to get that specific kind of recommendations and um, you know, continue to kind of move forward so that that could certainly influence the, the council members. The goal was to certainly try to influence the council members in their strategy session about outcomes and, and priorities. Um, I don't know if that helps or confuses the, the matter a little bit. Uh, Brenda, I think what was confusing to, to me, I won't speak for anybody else, was that last meeting uh, we were giving the five uh, priorities and we needed to vote on what percentage uh, we wanted to, to go to each of them. And to me, I needed us to identify what that really meant um, under these programs to know how much money should have been placed or percentages put under each category. That's what I struggled with. Um, and so, and, and, and I think that was the intent, I guess what, what's hard for me is, is understanding the objective of, of what you need done based on what's being requested. Right. We, we, we don't know, we show up to this commission and, and we have an agenda that's preset. We don't really know what we're going to discuss until we're getting to here. Right. And, and I'm sorry that I sent this to you last night, but I'm running several companies. I'm trying to put together data that I'm thinking is going to help. Right. And I understand that it is a lot of information. Um, but I also know that if we don't get specific as a commission as to what we want to see, it's going to continue to be generalized in, in the community. And that's not what I think uh, or I, that I want to see. I won't speak for anybody else, but I think that that's what's tough is that 
I really want this commission to identify the importance and prioritize the programs that matter to us that we know are going to be impactful. It's hard enough for all of us to have to agree on, on it, more or less getting it out and, and, and once it gets to the staff and, and to city council level, right? I think at this point, Chair, we need to call a point of order only because we're diminishing in time and I and as passionate as we are about what we're doing, our directives were not met. Um, I, I love the information that was presented, but listening to Brenda and now identifying what our priorities are, really honestly, we're not meeting what they're needing because the percentages that, that we're being asked, as much as we disagree, as much as we may have this, this personal understanding and feelings, our directive is to advise. Um, and to that, to the to the staff, I'm gonna apologize to because we're not meeting that requirement. I understand where the rest of my the commission is coming from, but unless we start giving them what they need so that we can better support our community, I think we're falling short on our responsibilities. Point is well taken, but at this point, Chair, I'm, I need for you to be able to put us back on the directives, give us our tasks so we can fulfill what we're needing to for the, for the staff. I guess for me, it's just understanding what we're okay with. Nice. So what I don't want to do is, let's say, let's all make a decision and we're not okay with what we have because we have limited information. I think that's the hardest part for me. Can I, I, I would just like to echo sure. what Lisa said and, you know, I, I'm coming in kind of late, right? I do know that in my conversations with my uh, appointee, uh, Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran, when I discuss what we're doing, she seems to be very enthusiastic about this. So uh, I'm hoping that we can kind of find a solution to to what we're trying to get done. Because as a as SBAC, who knows better about recommendations than us that are small companies? And I think that's where I'm just have to put it out there. You know, um, I'm here to help out, but at the at the same time. I believe that our voices do matter. Our feedback does matter. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be on this board. So, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I really hope that we can find a, a really good compromise so that we can get some things done. Yeah, I mean, let me ask one more question to Brenda and then we can go from there. So, Brenda, if we were to come back to exactly what needs to be decided on today versus next week on the 8th, what is what are those specifics to be able to get us back on track? So what, and, and I'm actually kind of looking back at you, Jeremy, because you yeah. were in that meeting and that discussion. I'm, um, I'm just trying to make sure that we're on the same page here again, because like I said, I, I don't feel comfortable saying, hey, everybody, let's do a vote now because it's a lot of great information that still needs tweaking, but we can't talk outside of this meeting. No, I think what I'm hearing is that the agenda for, for next week needs to be reconsidered. Yes, for sure. Yeah, that's I something know, that and you so, and I have a pending meeting on too, so. Um, yeah, Anna and Anna has worked with everybody. I mean, Anna's the staff liaison, so she's worked with everybody on on kind of committing for that meeting. I think we need to circle back after this conversation, um, sure. and and really figure out what makes sense for that that meeting. But I think it's it's probably not the conversation about workforce. Um, shoot, there was the strategic plan and some of those things so that we can get what this commission and again SBAC is advisory and can provide what they want to um, we as staff we're just sharing what our understanding what has been asked and what was that conversation with with the EWDC chair um, right. so we'll just work on what that looks like I'd like to get a an understanding, I guess, from different members, just curious. How comfortable do you feel with with, with us moving forward with, you know, our recommendations and, and moving on to the 8th? I mean, 
because what I don't want to do is just say, hey, this is what we're going to do. And everybody's going to afterwards say, yeah, this is not the approach I want to take. I'm more of an includer here. Um, recommendations, Juanita or anybody, Sarah, I know Katie had to jump off. Jim. So as far as given the precise, based on the information that we received, I think it was really vital. My only concern is the fact that staff's not going to have enough time to compose the report that they need. Um, is I that agree with what that I could I could help build the report. Well, Jane, Jane brought a Jane made a very valid point because of you know what she was saying. I don't want to. We can't at this point really just say this is a number. No. But at the same time, staff is needing that, and I I agree with you. I think we're I think at this point. A lot of these commissions are not comfortable giving you that recommendation because I'd like to be able to look at the at the data e even more. Yeah. But if we if we keep getting too much in depth, we're going to miss the big picture, which is giving them recommendations and guidelines that we need to get back to our council men and women to make a to make a I guess create that strategic plan that we're needing to present. Okay. Anybody else? I agree. I wouldn't be comfortable giving any recommendations. I need to review it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, what I would recommend, yeah. um, I think this is really, really important for us, for the community. Um, we've talked about companies that are drowning. Uh, you know, time is of the essence. Can we maybe set an internal deadline and that would, uh, we can meet all the requirements? Um, I would be willing to drop everything I'm doing and make this a priority to help out staff. Uh, could that be a solution? I, I think, I guess my question is back to staff and especially specifically to Christina. We have worker bees who want to work here outside of a quorum, right? How do we then support staff? Because we can do a lot of the work, but it can be directed one way, correct? I think you're on mute. Uh, right, so you can provide your recommendations to staff, um, but there can't be any that's sharing that's of notes or anything like that. You really are limited um, in what you can do as a group or group of people. I really feel like if individual members of the commission send in their recommendations to that it is an equal share of what everybody gives. And like I said, it, it's something where I can work with staff to pull that together. I mean, being able to make um, changes or additions based on what people have in this document, that's, you know, that's a consensus. So, so that the document would not be a document from the commission because there mm -hmm. wasn't consensus on the document. It would be a document from individual members of the commission, if you understand the distinction. Correct. And can that then be pulled together by the chair or pulled together by staff into a single document? It could. Okay. That works. Is the desire so I'm now super confused. I apologize. No problem. Is the desire to just provide individual suggestions like an from aspect members or from based on what I just heard? That would be the only way for us to do it outside of spending a whole other meeting doing a discussion discussion. Okay. Okay. I'm, so I'm, it would be sure, Yeah, and I'm not sure that that's what EWDC would want because it would be very similar to doing a survey uh, allowing members of the public to send in suggestions. So these are just um, I forget how many we have here, but a group of you know, 12 individual ideas, and it's not, I think they're looking more for that consensus. Like I said, it's, it's any thoughts here? Cause I, I don't want to make an, a, you know, an opinion where everybody's like, okay, now we're going to kill off the other meeting just because we did that. I mean, I, I think Jeremy, we spent enough talking about what we can't do and what yep. long it is. I mean, we could have just had the discussions with everybody and try to close the loop, but 
uh, I think it's beyond discussing of what we can't do. I think that's not being productive in anything we're doing today. Can I make a suggestion? It Go seems it. like everybody wants to get to the point of being able to make an SBAC recommendation. So if everybody could, Anna provided the information that um, who Lisa presented today. So if everybody could provide comments by 2 p.m. on Thursday afternoon, we have to post the agenda on Friday. So that allows us a time to take a look at them, try to meld them into something, whatever the case may be, so that we have a clear, hopefully we can work with Christina then to make sure there's a clear agenda item on the, the meeting on the 8th for then there to be some conversation around that. Um, and then Jeremy, we will work with you as the chair on that agenda as to what, what else, if anything, gets included in that agenda. Does that? It does. Is everybody it does. comfortable I think with that? That's, I think that's where we're coming to. That's where we're okay. coming to. So 2 p.m. on Thursday, send it to Anna, myself, copying Jeremy. Everybody cool with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. And, okay. Yes. That's perfectly fine. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, from that, I'll work with staff to figure out the agenda for next time based on all the inputs that we have in. Uh, are there any other points of order or anything else before we close out? Got a question. Jeff, uh, is there any particular format you want comments in? However, it makes sense. I got it. Staff, do you do you, just as clear possible, and just, concise, <laughs> clear and concise possible as possible. <laughs> send out a, a follow-up email to everybody with that deadline, so they're very much aware. Is that two p.m.? Fantastic. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Let's go ahead and close this out. So. Um, Anything else before we close it out? Anybody? Okay, so I move to close this out. Let's do this. So the time is what? what time is it? 1219. Time is 1219. Entertain a motion to adjourn the Small Business Commission meeting. Motion to adjourn. Any second? Second. Second. Okay. Second. okay. Second is um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes. We will adjourn the meeting at 12 18 slash 19. Thank you. See you guys uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.